Hi everyone, my name is Akio Matsuoka and I am a co-author of the book Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. The book is about computational jewelry design using Rhino and Grasshopper and it is available on Amazon side of your country. This YouTube channel, Eva and I are showing many jewelry modeling techniques and tips. Today, I'll be modeling a V-ring with pear-shaped diamond on top and micro prong on the shank. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, the first, starting from the front viewport, making a circle, starting zero. Diameter is 16.51 for the size, 6 for the US size. Then go to the right viewport and create a cross section. I'm going to use a ellipse and the height of the shank is 1.9 millimeter. And the width of the shank is 2.2 because I'm going to use a 1.8 millimeter diamond on the shank. Then need a 0.2 millimeter spacing outside the diamond. So 1.8 millimeter stone plus 0.2 plus 0.2 is 2.2 millimeters. So width of the shank will be 2.2 millimeter. So this is going to be the angle of the ring, the second shank. Go to the curve tools and go to the curve from two views. Click this line and a circle. Here is a curve for the second shank. Then I will copy this ellipse to the second shank. And then I want this height to be a little bit lower than the first one because this is going to be overwrapping. So the top of this shank is kind of tucked under the other ring. Scale 1D to make it lower. Go to the ring layer and a sweep one rail to create two shanks. Sweep one rail, select the rail. This is a sweep shape. Move the seam inside the ring. Okay, and then the other one. The same, move the seam inside. This looks good. This is how I want this ring to look like. The angled ring is tucked under the other ring. I have a 10 millimeter pear shaped diamond and going to make a setting for it. Okay, I'm gonna grab this curve, go to the right viewport and bring it down a little bit. So this is where the setting starts. And I will scale it so that the setting doesn't show from the top. And then make a copy of it. It doesn't matter how deep because we're going to bring on difference with a shank later. So tap the Alt key to create a duplicate. And I will scale it for the tapered look. Okay, then loft these two curves. Enter, and I will move the seam to the front so that it's going to be easier to adjust. And then cap it. There we go. Then I will create a seat. So I will offset this curve right here so I don't know how much so I will go to the through point and right here good okay so that's gonna be this curve layer okay then 
turn on the stone again and go to the right pee port change it to the ghosted and I will create a seat so somewhere around here and I will scale it yep make sure that you're holding down the shift key for uniform scaling it's good okay then I will extract this top surface and split it with this curve and then here is a seat okay so I'm going to project this curve to the bottom surface here we go then split this bottom surface with this curve love command and click the curve in the order enter change the seam uh, maybe we don't have to change the seam but just in case I don't want the surface to be twisted then enter straight section option looks good and then join the, all, the, all the surfaces then go back to the top viewport and turn on the diamond that looks good so I'm going to create a prong now first I'm going to create a V prong at the tip box command I will start from here maybe 1.4 1. Uh, 1. by 1.4 and the height I don't know something like that and bring it down make it longer then rotate this pivot point is right here first reference point grab this corner and second reference point hold on shift then bring it up and then bring it up with the alt key the duplicate and bring on difference here we go all right then I want this to be a little bit angled so rotate then this prong on the top so sit in the command I will snap right here so 1.2 millimeter diameter then bring it down and rotate something like this and change it to the front view also rotate it okay that looks good then I will mirror to the other side so I have a shortcut called MH mirror horizontal actually I want to move this one a little bit towards right there see I have a history so the other mirrored object will update okay looks good so I will group it for the template lily and then turn on the shank and bring it on the top and let me rotate it make some adjustment ungroup it move the prongs to a different layer 
and I will fill it this edge a little bit. So I do fill the edges. I will do point two, and I have to select the, all the edges. good all right so we will keep it like this for now and then get rid of this bottom so I will use wire cut select circle enter select the object to cut I will select the prong and setting enter okay that looks good. I'm going to bring on difference this prong with this shank. Okay, that too. Now I will cut the bottom of this setting. Go to the left view and I will create a line. And then extrude it with a gumball. Okay, then check the direction. Arrow has to be pointing to the direction you wanted to keep the object. So that has to be up. Then bring on difference with this plane and here we go good now I imported this block instance this is 1.8 millimeter stone with cutters I'm going to array on the top of this shank so extract isocurb I need a curb to array the block Okay, then I will split this curve, point option, probably starting from here and there, and do the other side, the same thing, point option. Okay, then I will delete the curve that we don't need. Good. Then I'm going to draw a line, which is the same exact length to this curve because we're using a flow long curve. So those base curve and target curve has to be the exactly the same length. So start of line, end of the line. Type L, enter. For the length command, this is a shortcut. And select the curve, enter. Here we go. Then move this from zero to the edge of this curve. And then array it. And then really array. Number of the stone, I'm not sure how many exactly, probably like 10. And first reference point, second reference point, so that that has enough space in between. Then turn on the curve. Okay. I will ungroup the last group. I will end this with this V cutter. Then check the direction of the curve. Going left to right. And how about the curve on the top? This is running bottom to top, so I will flip the direction. 
Looks good. Then ungroup it. Then flow along curve. Select the object to flow. Enter. And base curve. Uh, make sure rigid is yes. Click this side of this curve. And I'll click right here. Great. Okay. Then I will hide this one temporarily. Then turn off the gem layer. Okay. I will align these cutters so that it doesn't cut to the other side of the shank. Go to the right viewport. Align command. Align to the right. And I will align just outside the shank. Here we go. The bottom part doesn't have to be aligned, so I will move it to the right. Okay. They are still the blocks, so I will explode this block to lower level object. Otherwise, Boolean operation won't work. So now Boolean difference. Before Boolean difference the cutter, I will Boolean union two shanks to make it one shank. Then Boolean difference with a cutter. Okay. Then sweep one rail to create cutter in the center. And cap it. Then Boolean difference. Here we go. All right. So now repeat the same thing the other side of the shank. Line command. And end of line. I'll enter. Select the curve. Move this block from zero. Point to move to is on a curve. Here we go. Then turn off the curve. Rini array. Number of item, I will make it 10 for now. First reference point and second reference point. Good. Then this is a curve, and I will delete the last one. And let me ungroup everything. Okay, D delete the last set. And uh, let me move this curve to the left, because the one on the right is going to be on the top of the shank. Then check the direction. And I want this curve to be the other way. Flip it. And what about this curve? Yeah, right to the left. Good. Float on curve. Select the object to array. Enter. Base curve, select the one end. I will click this curve on the right side. And target curve, this is a matching end. Here we go. 
and turn off the gem explode the block so now it's ready to put a boolean difference okay then sweep one rail cap it and difference from the shank. Here we go. Okay, so the last step is we'll put on union everything. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of this inside. Duplicate the edge. And join these curves. And create extrusion. Bring it up. And check the direction. It has to pointing outside. But that's not good. Rip it, then Boolean difference. Now the ring is ready. I hope you enjoyed today's ring modeling. Please leave a comment if you like to see a particular type of rhino or grasshopper modeling. I see you on the next video.